this is a replica of an Indian decoy. Seventeen of them were found in a cave out in Nevada in 1924. They were made by the North Paiute Indians. And the important thing is that they estimated that they were over 2,000 years old. So that meant that the Indians in this country were using decoys before the colonists came. But when the colonists did come, of course, they bought with them axes and knives, and they were surrounded by trees. So they started making their decoys out of wood. Any decoys before you leave here. Now the decoy is made in two parts. The old timers uh, would carve the body with an axe and they'd carve the head with the, a knife. And there are 23 species of American ducks and you'll see them all. This is an example of a snake box. And the hunter would be in that cavity and when the ducks flew over, they simply shoot them. They also have a duck stamp when they, before they can hunt. But the first duck stamp was issued in 1935. It was done by a gentleman called Ding Darling. And he went to President Roosevelt and Congress to raise money for habitat for the migrating birds. And this is how they did it. They issued a duck stamp. And Ducks Unlimited has administered that program since 1935 and have earned about $750 million doing it to buy up land for habitat. On your left is a, a hunting rig. You see all the, the different ducks have a little uh, lead sinker. They'd go out in the morning and throw the, the birds in the water and come back in the uh, late afternoon and retrieve them. That's why all the heads are straight ahead so they can grab them. There's one and Steve. Len did all the painting, and although he was a good carver, and Steve did all the uh, carving. They were brothers a year apart. People frequently say they look like twins. Well, they do, but they were a they're year apart. They were a year apart. Heather. And this was their logo, mm -hmm. Wildfowl Counterfeiters. Mm -hmm. That's a picture of Lemon Steve uh, just posing for publicity. They actually work in their own little like, cubicle. As I said, Steve did the carving and Lem did the uh, painting. If you notice here, Lem was born with a congenital deformed uh, left arm and okay. still he was able to do a beautiful painting. Mm. The, it's estimated that they made about 25,000 decoys. In the beginning they were selling them for a dollar and a quarter or two fifty. It wasn't near the end, they probably were charging a hundred. It's the collectors who made the money. All those birds on the wall mm. were done by the brothers. Mm. But uh, and some of them were worth some money. The most important items in this shop or in the case, Len used to go back at night and work on these. He carved them and he painted them. And this was before the era of tools, you know, high-speed drills and that. He, he used simple carpenter tools uh, to uh, carve these birds. So this is the beginning of the decorative decoy. You went from the Indian to the working decoy to the decorative. Decorative. We're now in the decorative. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Now the wood that they liked to use the most was cedar. And they got that wood out of old telephone poles. There's an example over here. They cut the pole in half and that would become the body. They simply carved the body out of that piece there. And they carved the head with a knife. After World War II, they got their hands on some old Navy life rafts. And they took the balsa wood out and they used the balsa wood to the body. 
So they, they would use anything really they could get their hands on. This is the barber shop, and they simply started adding on to it. And if you went down to Crisfield, this is what it would look like. It's probably only open on weekends. But their house was right next to it. And Lynn's daughter still lives in that house. But we still carve birds the same way they did. You have your pattern, and you cut that out on a band saw. But during their life, there were three, two articles in National Geographic. They got an award from the National Endowment of the Arts, and you see a picture of them getting an honorary degree at Salisbury University. They were two gentle individuals, uh, probably didn't go beyond the fifth grade. They were very bright and very sensitive. One is real and one is uh, God. The, the, the feathers? Right. Now, which is we have that in competition, but we don't anymore. The one on the right is carved. Ordinarily, we have an example of not in one, uh, one of the pairs in 1991, and you can see the vast difference in the carving. Because during that 20-year period, somebody invented a burning pen, a high-speed drill, and of course, acrylic paints came, which made it much easier to paint. There are two separate skills in carving. It, one is the carving, the other is the painting. And painting takes longer to learn. This is a, the newest category of champagne. They're three and a half inches long and they must float. This piece here was done by Ernie Milmet, who lives here in Salisbury now. Oh, oh. 